Father, into the Son, into the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Make us worthy, O Lord, now to do like the lamp of our souls, with the oil of charity, like the wise virgin. To await you, O heavenly bridegroom, anxiously and vigilantly, to enter into your company, your kingdom filled with joy. We will offer glory and thanksgiving to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Baraboro, have mercy on us, O Lord, and assist us. O harbor of salvation and port of safety, you are the lighthouse that draws us to you, the radiance of your light. Above the stormy seas of this world, enlighten us with the splendor of your face in your kingdom to come, where peace and harmony reign. We offer glory to you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. Right, Lisa, do you want to be choir one or choir two? Because you're kind of in the middle. So we will divide it up. Here. Okay. <laughs> so you'll do the verses for the, what, they, what they're putting down, congregation one, and then you'll do congregation two. Okay. And the tone. Da 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 of the 
the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. His glory shines upon the world and lightens the very depths of the abyss. Death is annihilated by his finish and the gates of Sheol are broken. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. Creatures lying in darkness from ancient times are clothed in light. The dead arise from the dust and sing because they have a Savior. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. He brings salvation and grants us life. He ascends to his Father on high. He will return in glory of splendor and shed his light on those gazing upon him. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Barak Boromo, have mercy on us, O Lord, and assist us. O Lord, on the day when we meet you, do not extinguish the light of our lamps. O heavenly bridegroom, fill our lamps with the oil of your divine love, and we may remain with you until the end. You are our Lord and God, to you be glory forever. Amen. Alleluia. O merciful one, open your door to those who shed their tears, as you did for the repenting woman, be pleased with our sacrifice, and accept the penance of our heart, as you accept in the songs of David the just. Alleluia! O Lord, hear us, we come to find our refuge
So, lads, if you want to light the, turn on the lights. You can extinguish your hand candles. Take your places in the pews. Very well done. So now we enter into the listening to the word of God who is our refuge and hearing the voice of our Lord. So we have the sugito. Sugito is a very specific form of Syriac poetry. Of course, it doesn't come out in the English, though this is a translation of it. But we have the same thing. Congregation one, congregation two, we'll use the same tone. And then as you notice, we go into the hisoyo. He's turning off the lights. Make sure they all go on. And then we have the readings following. So, the Suhito on page nine. Bring your lamps, O brothers and sisters. All right, we will start this again. Bring your lambs, O oh brothers and sisters. The day of the Lord has dawned on us. In the shadow of his evening of life, he rewards generously those who have lived in justice. O oh Lord of truth to the just ones, Open the door of the garden of delights. With their praise and their guitars. comes to satisfy their thirst, yet they tremble at his encounter. Oh, how hard was the night of their waiting. Oh, how they long for the name of the coming one. On that day, the greatest of days, all secrets of the heart are revealed. When you come, O oh Lord, to meet you in the love of a consumed heart. Stolen Kalos, Kiri Eleis. The Stolen Kalos used to always be sung during all the liturgies before. It's actually Greek. To the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. I burn this incense. So please stand. Stomen Kalos. That's what the order was, as we stand in order. May we be worthy to offer praise, glory, and honor to the wise creator in his grace, brought everything into existence, to the mighty Savior who humbled himself and for our salvation because of his love for us, to the harbor of safety in whom the weary ones find rest for their souls, to the calming peace who liberated people from the heavy burdens of the law, to the just one who assumed our nature of sinners in order to save us, to the physician who in his compassion tended to the sick and cured them, to the good one we glory, honor, and our due in this moment and all the days of our lives forever. O oh God, you are the eternal light who enlightened all creatures with the rays of your revelation. You created us in your image. You filled us with the gift of your Holy Spirit. 
When we had disobeyed your command, we were chased from the abode of life and exiled from your paradise. In your external mercies, you had compassion on us and sent your only Son for our salvation. In his saving and life-giving plan, he showed us the way of life to follow. He became for us a safe guide to the true light, and he handed us a new command, the command of love, the yoke of humility and the peace of conscience. In it we found absolute peace for our soul. O Lord, with the joyful hearts and with peaceful consciences, we walk according to the command you have given us, and with illuminated minds we give you thanks. We hold our lamps in our hands, and we take off our old self, following your example, and put on the new one. We radiate with your illuminating teachings, and we cross from darkness to the eternal light you promised us. With the prophet David we cry out, saying, During the day we are enlightened by your teachings, and at night we walk behind you as a column of fire. Our minds and our thoughts are enlightened by you as we do our due deeds of justice. You have made us worthy to accept this life-giving passion of your only Son who became for us the harbor of salvation. With the wise virgins we meet you with lighted lamps filled with oil of good deeds instead of the fading lamps which we hold now in our hands. In your glorious kingdom you shall light the lamps of our souls with the oil of love and the purity of heart, sincerity of conscience, and complete freedom. We offer glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. In the radiance of that day, O sea of mercy and compassion, in your abundant generosity and eternal kindness, you comfort those who grieve, suffer, and seek refuge in you. O harbor of safety and salvation, through the incense we now offer you, be a support and a savior to all those who came in true faith to the harbor of your holy church. As we commemorate your saving passion for us, we offer glory to you forever. Amen. All things hidden hidden it will be revealed. All kinds of secrets will be known. What was said in secret, proclaim it in a loud voice. What was darkness will become light for you. All days and nights of my life, I meditate upon the word of the Lord, hope for all generations. <coughs> a reading from the letter of Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, 
Let us leave behind the basic teaching about Christ and advance to maturity without laying the foundation all over again. Repentance from dead works and faith in God, instruction about baptisms and laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and we shall do this if only God permits. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened and tasted the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit and tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to bring them repentance again since they are re-crucifying the Son of God for themselves and holding him up to contempt. Ground that has absorbed the falling rain upon it repeatedly and brings forth crops useful to those for whom it is cultivated receives the blessings from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is rejected. It will soon be cursed and finally burned. But we are sure in your regard, beloved, of the better things related to salvation, even though we speak in this way. Praise be to God always. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Let us prepare and come out to meet him. The praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. With your spirit. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be attentive, let us be attentive to the gospel of life and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by the Apostle Matthew. Remain silent to listeners for the Holy Gospel is about to be announced to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle Matthew writes, And leaving them, Jesus went out of the city to to Bethany, and there he spent the night. And when he was going back to the city in the morning, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went over to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And immediately the fig tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed, and they said, How was it that the fig tree withered immediately? Jesus said to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, if you have faith and do not waver, not only shall you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it shall be done. Whatever you ask for in prayer with faith, you shall receive. When he had come into the temple area, the chief priest and the elders of the people approached him as he was teaching, and they said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them in reply, I shall ask you one question, and if you answer it for me, 
Then I shall tell you by what authority I do these things. Where was John's baptism from? Was it of heavenly or of human origin? They discussed this among themselves, and they said to themselves, if we say of heavenly origin, then he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we fear the crowd, for they all regarded John as a prophet. So they said to Jesus in answer, we do not know. And he himself said to them, neither shall I tell you by which authority I do these things. This is the truth, peace be with you. Thus, leaving the word of the beginning of Christ, let us go on to more perfect things, not laying again the rudiments of faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So if we see the way that this week is constructed, entering into the meditation on our Lord's passion, the next two days we'll deal with our Lord's suffering in the Gospels, and the morning will be read of our Lord's passion. Not part of the liturgy, but within the liturgy of Safro. But what we also have going on then is leading us to Wednesday of the rite of the lamp. And the rite of the lamp is an anointing of oil and a healing ceremony which is done to bring us all the way to the very edge of our observances, if you like, before we enter Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the observances of distinctly commemorating our Lord's Passover, his movement from life to death. And it's interesting, this reading to the letter to the Hebrews. Remember, this letter is written to those Christians who are wavering. They're being persecuted, and they really are, have a desire to say, well, this is not the truth, and Jesus is not the Messiah. That's why we also think, because of all the discussion of lit liturgy within this text, that these Christians are actually formerly priests of the old law of the temple. And that's what St. Paul is dealing with here in this chapter six. Chapter five, he deals with the whole section about our Lord as high priest. Chapter seven, following this chapter, will be about the fact that that priesthood of our Lord is superior to the old law, to the Old Testament. But this chapter six is actually on hope. Hope, but the seriousness with the seriousness which with, with which we have to embrace the faith. This is the chapter when he starts speaking about the fact of if you waver, and this is the redemption, what is left open to you except destruction at that point? Because you have left the very source of your healing. This is all in chapter six. Which is why the very first lines, what I was quoting to you, when he says, leaving aside, because he's been describing the temple and the things that are in the temple and all the things about the old law, but which have passed now. And the distinction between John's baptism and the baptisms of the Pharisees, and of course, the Christian mystery of holy baptism. And that's why he says, now we leave this aside for the moment, because I want you to consider the seriousness with which you have embraced the faith. And so verses four through six, and I highly encourage you over the next day or so to go and look at this chapter six. There's, there's much more in it. We're not going to spend the whole time in detail on it. But verses four through six, he, he talks about the tragic state, the situation of those who have already been baptized, who have tasted the supernatural things of God, and as he says, who have tasted already the power of the day of judgment to come, but who have fallen away. 
What is there, he says, left open to them? He says in verse six, they are crucifying again themselves, themselves crucifying the Son of God and holding him up to contempt. And in verses seven and eight, he gives the example of the land, the land that receives the rain and that when it enters into the soil, it is blessed and it brings forth food. But the land that is hardened, he says, the land that is hardened and only brings forth weeds and sparse vegetation becomes reprobate. It's cast off. It's good for nothing. That's what's linking us to this um, parable or the event that takes place in the gospel, our Lord cursing the fig tree. It represents Israel. Our Lord has come at this time now. He goes to the tree to find fruit, and there's just leaves. It's alive, it's there, but it's producing no fruits. So these two are linked, these two readings are linked. And he says that what these individuals do by walking away from the faith, they become the cursed field, but they also trod upon the blood of Christ that was shed for their redemption. So it's a very strong section, though it is one of hope because he's saying you have been given all of this restoration and health. Why would you leave it? And so it's read in conjunction with our Lord as being wahado, a refuge, being our harbor. And that's why he says at the very end of this last verse in this section, one through nine, he says, but my dearly beloved, you who have received these things, we trust better things of you. We know that you know better and we know that you will continue to hang on to this faith, which will bring you even closer then to the healing of salvation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we have our kolo, our hymn at the bottom of page 15. O Christ, the bridegroom, we come to meet you. O Lord, O Lord, open for us. We ask you, beg you, and knock at your door. O Lord, O Lord, open for us. We heard your voice, O good shepherd, for the lambs of your flock you are the door. O Lord, O Lord, open for us. O Lord, gate of mercies, open to those who knock and ask for your saving grace. Lead us to the light of your eternal kingdom. We are the children of your holy church, and with our lamps lit we have come to the church as the harbor of salvation. We offer glory to you forever. So the hymn, now we have the next colo. Praise to him, that night he saved us from our burdens. Trials and pain are over. Let us come and meet at the harbor, the living treasure, the true peace. That night the light covered earthly beings and heavenly ones. They all praise the Son of Light, the Maker of Light. In the world he brings us safety to the harbor. Praise to you, O Son of the Father, for your passion. Praise to you, O Father of truth. Praise to you, O Spirit of holiness. 
You are the one God, a trinity. You are light most exalted above all lines. Stand. Morio etala. Morani trahamalain. Middle of the night they cry. Wake up, the bridegroom is coming. In their hands they hold lamps filled with oil. Like the moonlight in their face. And their hearts like the burning flame. Mora Foolish has its own face. An empty lamp void of oil, the heart of the foolish virgins trembled at the waking call. O Lord, our night has no end, nor our foolishness. Do not let us meet you with an empty lamp. Morun itaramalain. In the lamp in need of oil, light dies to the needy heart. Open, O Lord, your treasure and make your lamp during the night of my life remain lit. That immersed in light. I may praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us adore, so you bow profoundly towards the altar of our Lord's passion. Let us adore, thank, and praise the most holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Kadishat aloho kadishat hayalotono kadishat loyoto mishiho deti mishiho deti le gabro fai to the weary and relief to those who struggle and support and protection to those who seek refuge in you. O harbor of safety and salvation, save all those who in true faith have reached the harbor of your holy church. We offer glory and thanksgiving to you now and forever. 